Hey guys, Leanna here, and uh, I haven't played a game in a while on my YouTube channel, so I thought I'd fire this one up. It's called uh, Anna's Quest, and it's a uh, it's a game that I got a review code for a while back, and because of E3, everything got really kind of messed up, and um, I'm not going to do very much in it. I'll just show you guys the graphics and stuff like that, and the fact that there's a teddy bear friend, which is kind of cute and creepy at the same time. But, um, yeah, I don't want to, it's a, it's a puzzle adventure game, so I don't want to give you guys many spoilers. Um, so I'll just sort of show you the the basic gameplay as I talk. It is Feedback Friday today. It is. But you guys may have no noticed that it was a bit of a weird week. And so I'm, I'm sort of hesitant to, um, there's a cat, you'll notice. Um, I'll show you the cat. There's, I'm a bit hesitant to sort of, here we go. Look at this pretty collar of yours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. She's a precious little thing. Kind of like dealing with Binky. Going to be so, easy. so, uh, I'll just fart around. Um, like I said, it was a bit of a weird week and everybody's nerves are really raw. And so I just want to be, um, super careful about how how I addressed the feedback this week. I mean, a lot of it was very very positive, which was great. I mean, the the whole back and forth with Eric Kane from Forbes this week was really great, um, and uh, you know, all good, all good, all good. But I don't want it to seem like oh, it's good, so I'm not going to address feedback. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. One one thing I did learn, kind of the hard way this week, is that the term spurging is linked to Asperger syndrome. So I won't be using that term anymore. I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know. Sorry about that. But um, some one person was, you know, more than a bit of a jerk. And they're like, well, it's against your religion to say it. It's not that it's against my religion and I'm resisting the urge to call somebody a name now. I'm, I'm gonna with I'm gonna hold back. Um, there's a little mouse up there. I have to get to. It's that it's just not worth upsetting certain people. And with the morality police being the way it is, uh, the stuff I can avoid, I'm going to avoid. That, won't work. that should be fairly simple, you know, fairly common sense. But people are just so oh free speech. And all that stuff that that people don't, uh, you know, just because you can't do something doesn't necessarily mean you should. And so that that was one bit of feedback that I will respond to. Uh, I'm gonna stop farting around because I'm distracting myself, and I want to keep this video um, fairly fairly cohesive. Uh, the other bit of feedback that I did sort of get this week was when I asked, "Do you guys prefer?" the term male hierarchy to patriarchy quite a few people said yes it doesn't trigger me as much fine so i will keep that in mind going forward one guy completely lost his shit on me and said it's not the same thing and it's not accurate but this guy didn't have a good thing to say about anything and implied i don't actually talk to any actual men i only rely on studies for things so when someone approaches a situation like that, um, obviously they're not taken very seriously by me. Uh, and that's sort of something that um, made me start thinking if this is, you know, maybe this is the, 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 the lesson for the week. That approach matters, right? And I mean, that ties into the video I did Thursday about Nicki Minaj and Taylor Swift. There is one update I wanted to do on that, um, that Katy Perry then weighed in and made a very good point that I, I didn't really think about because I didn't really care very much about the Taylor Swift video. But um, she pointed out that for all of Taylor Swift's, you know, oh, don't, don't go after another woman, love and support and all that stuff. Her video itself is apparently a beef video and there's rumors that it's about Katy Perry, but also the whole video is women fighting. So that's an interesting bit 
of do as I say, not as I do on behalf of on, on the part of Taylor Swift. But I, I still think that, you know, as much as I'm like, yeah, good point, Katy Perry. Good for you. Now I like you for something more than than Left Shark and your adorableness. But I still think that that Taylor Swift added um despite herself helped Nicki Minaj get her message out let's look at the creepy doll in honor of Taylor Swift that was surprising (laughs) but funny um but yeah I think that if they hadn't had the cat fight which really wasn't a cat fight uh I don't think that nearly as many people would have been aware of the issue that that Nicki Minaj is highlighting that doesn't mean they listened that doesn't mean they took it seriously and that sucks because it's important but you know more people heard it and that's a good thing and I'm really glad that people are talking about this because Nicki Minaj made a good point about how you know um, the standards are different for our certain types of artists and certain types of women and and definitely you know, black women do have increased challenges in the entertainment industry in terms of, of stereotyping and, and where and how they're accepted. I, I think that's undeniable, despite all the people attempting to deny it. And uh, it's I've been thinking a lot about the denialism that goes on in these issues. Um, it's it's tough. It's tough, and it it reminded me again of something that I've been struggling with in terms of what I do and the impact I'm making, because I'm not in this just to hear the sound of my own voice, and I'm not in this just to get, you know, clicks on YouTube, although obviously that's important. People don't pay attention to you unless you get clicks, and getting clicks is not something I'm especially good at, which kind of sucks, but, you know... I'm going to keep at it and see what happens. I'm doing this to try to make a positive impact on things, to try to inform people and to try to get other people engaging in a more meaningful way in some of these issues involving video games. And, you know, case in point, this game, um, yeah, you start as a princess in a tower, which is a damsel in distress trope, but then it's, oh, the princess saves herself. Does that make it better? That's the debate. Right. And I don't think that we should get hung up on immediately. Oh, princess in a tower thing. This game does it in a different way. There's the whole girl in the tower with the witch and magic and all this stuff. But there's a technological element. And that's sort of the thing that I'm finding very interesting. I I will say to you guys right off the bat, if you're a voice acting snob, the the audio mix is not the best in this game and there are a couple of very obvious edits. It's going to great until you get used to it. The graphics though are amazing in this cute little rat I'm trying to get at. Um, you know, it's a, it's a cute game, but this is the sort of thing where should we... Oh, here we go. Figured it out. No, he doesn't seem particularly interesting. Huh. Work only. It doesn't look. Ah, got it. Okay. So while I'm solving this puzzle, I didn't want to spoil too many things for you guys, but I got to have something happen that's interesting. But like I said, is it fair to this game to politicize it based on one person's particular pet peeve in games that, that happens to identify as a feminist? No, that's not fair. There's, there's a real difference between... Um, Examining a concept because it's interesting and examining a concept because we feel like we have to. And it's been a heck of a week for, I'm going to pause in this till it gets boring again. Something happened there. So, um, but, um, maybe I should save my game. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I think that, that, like I said, there's a big difference and people are a lot more responsive to stuff. I think if, um, they can come to it on their own. They can come to decisions on their own instead of being reforced, forced to by this online mob or this social pressure to think a certain way. And boy, has that been a week for that. Uh, Troy Baker getting harassed off Twitter, the Sony executive, uh, Sony online executive that is taking a leave of absence because he was harassed and harassed and harassed. And I mean, serious harassment, like messing with flights he was on and things like that. You can read about it if you want. 
Um, and people are saying it's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. Well, in order for it to stop, we need our own figures like Nicki Minaj who are, you know, empowered enough because they're successful enough to speak out and then being willing to take that personal knock and, and suffer sort of public embarrassment to do that. And this is where the whole issue of, you know, internet anonymity comes in to the whole thing. Cause I admit that hater I was talking about earlier that, that came out, uh, came out swinging at me and didn't like anything. So I just ignored all the feedback they had to say their icon is a Vivian James icon, which I know is not their real persona. It doesn't tell me anything about them except that they're a Gamergate supporter. And, and I admit that I took them less seriously because of that, not because they're a Gamergate supporter. I think everybody knows that it's more that they're not willing to put any sort of real online reputation at stake. Um, to to have a discussion and to voice those views and so if there's no consequence for them i can't take what they're saying seriously um this is mean she's messing with this rat's mind that's not cheese that was me she wouldn't throw something at the rat which is kind of honest but she'll she'll screw with the poor rat's mind and instead of giving him cheese, giving a combination of mold and paint. That's not okay. But I still have to figure out how to f mess with this cat, too. Which is kind of... This is this is the thing about these adventure games that sort of girly... Oh, right. I'm, I stay off this level because Lady constantly talks. But uh, this is kind of funny thing about these adventure games. They make Oh, look, it's about a girl. It's for a different audience. But you're making us screw with animals i don't care that it's a rat and i don't care that the cat's mean shouldn't mess with their heads i'm i'm kidding obviously right we have to keep a sense of humor about this stuff but you know the the whole thing i was saying is about people uh needing to be willing to sort of speak their minds and be you know people i think people need to be better with disagreements everyone and the problem is we exist in all these communication modes that you know are upvoted or liked or favorited or disliked or downvoted and and the minute you get that sort of populist model you get echo chambers i mean people start playing to the crowd because they don't want the negative feedback they don't want and and especially on something like reddit where when you're downvoted people are less likely to see it nobody wants their words condemned to obscurity and so they play to the crowd you know and tailoring your message for a particular audience and actually changing your message because of that audience are very different things and i think too often people tailor their message you know they play politics and they tailor their message to uh, a crowd like uh, a subreddit or something like that. And that doesn't give us the best ideas. It doesn't give us the best thoughts. It gives us the thoughts that are going to be most readily accepted by that environment. And this is the trouble I get into. You know, I, I did a thing on, on gender, on uh, aggrieved entitlement theory. And a lot of people liked it and that's wonderful. And I, I, it was very validating that other people were Facebooking me and tweeting me and messaging me and applying it themselves. And they came to some, uh, conclusions that I hadn't really thought about. I'm not sure if I agree or not. The important thing is that they were applying it. So to me, it's less important that they, you know, got the right answer uh, according to me and more that, oh, look, they're engaging. They're trying. That's amazing. It's to be a bit cheesy because it's about games. It's interactive, right? They're not sitting here waiting for a game to do something. They're, they're interacting with this game we call, you know, online, online interaction. And, um, and this game is very cute, but I digress. Um, Yes, I am just farting around so I can talk to you guys. I, I will show you what that key does in a minute. And that, that's where I'll wrap. I, I want to wrap there because it's a big, yay, see, go play the game. Stuff happens. See what I'm doing? Yes. Um, 
But yeah, the structures were trying to have these discussions in do matter. And I don't think it's, oh, it's just Twitter. We can't do any better. Or, oh, it's Reddit. We can't do any better. No, we can do better by being aware of what these structures do. And it's funny because that whole study about, you know, um, lower status males deferring to a higher status male and being more hostile to women in, in that environment. I found it very interesting under those, those, um, uh, under that paradigm that eight people for some odd reason disliked the video I did on the issue. But then I did a follow-up video where showing that, you know, Eric Kane from Forbes approved of my work and I looked up his work and, and it was a bit of an unofficial collaboration an, an organic collaboration, zero dislikes on that. So the minute Eric Kane, high status male in, in, in this ecosystem, for lack of a better term, endorsed me, all of a sudden I got no dislikes. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's interesting, isn't it? Um, and, and that's an interesting sort of test of the theory. And I'll, I'll tell you, it kind of sucks to know that for whatever reason, I am going to catch more negativity than, than a guy in, in the same environment. That's not fun to hear. And that's why I really don't like these studies. And that's why I kind of break into these studies and try to figure out, you know, all the potential meanings and, and not just knee jerk jump to some conclusion. But it is an issue and we do have to get better dealing with disagreements and dealing with differences of opinions. Because to me, having a difference of opinion is not the same as disliking something. And I find it very interesting that a lot of people will dislike videos because they disagree with them. And to me, that's, that's sort of low level stuff, right? Like, I, I don't know how somebody can do that and then claim to be a free thinker. You're disliking just based on disagreement, not that the person was offensive, not that you thought that they actually made, you know, logistical mistakes, that it was low quality thought, just that you disagreed. And this fear of disagreement, this fear of, you know, some people will call it infighting, some people will call it drama llama -ing. I think it's perfectly good for someone to get passionate about something. I think it's perfectly good for someone to care enough that they get worked up about something within reason, right? I mean, I try to always make sure that I can sort of goof around and laugh at something or do a little aside. So you guys know I'm passionate about something, but I'm not mad. Like I'm not so emotionally out of control that it's affecting my logic on an issue. But I mean, we do know that women are more likely to be criticized for being angry than men. We don't know why. We just know that. And you know, I say things like that and people immediately get prickly. They immediately start hitting that dislike button. And my question here is, guys, if you only support me when you agree with me, how can you actually claim that support? How can I do my work and challenge some of these lazier thinkers, challenge some of the people that, you know, give us this fixation on tropes. How do you expect me to do that if you're going to punish me for every disagreement? I can't get any clout. I can't get any collateral that way. If you actually want change, you have to start supporting the people that can actually enact that change. They're in a position to correct things from the inside. And if you lose your shit Every time I point out that there might actually be a gender related issue on this point, not across gaming. I don't know how many times I can say that gaming is not a particular hotbed of sexism. It's not. Wherever you have people, you're going to have bigotries. It, it, that doesn't mean we don't work to make it better. It just means it is so. And I will defend gaming like crazy. I am a gamer. I identify as a gamer, but I'm not threatened just because somebody else doesn't identify as a gamer or they say, I'm not a gamer, I'm a game developer. And to them, that's an important distinction. Fine. I don't care. That's their opinion. And I really wonder why people on all sides 
are getting so worked up and so in a lather if somebody identifies as a game developer and not a gamer, or someone makes a joke involving Caitlyn Jenner, not even about Caitlyn Jenner, just involving Caitlyn Jenner, and they'll harass someone off Twitter. Like, and, and the thing is, the stuff that made Troy Baker quit was pretty freaking tame by Twitter standards. Doesn't mean it's appropriate. Doesn't mean it's cool. It's just, look, guys, somebody who isn't like, you know, that frog in the boiling water metaphor, who hasn't been subjected to the temperature gradu gradually being turned up, he got about a three on the scale of one to ten of Twitter nonsense. And he went, forget this. And it was totally the right thing to do. But that should make everyone stop and question the way they're conducting themselves on the internet. And what gets me is, it doesn't. People go right back to no bad tactics, only bad targets thinking. And people don't even realize they're doing it. They're like, yeah, but reasons. No, there are no reasons for freaking out on somebody. You know, people go so off the rails and they get so emotionally worked up that it, it turns into the situational logic. Today, somebody I've talked to quite a bit and all of a sudden, because he disagreed with me on something he was particularly passionate about, in this case, the hatred of the UN, um, and, and don't get me wrong, the UN is far from perfect, but that doesn't mean it's not right some of the time. But he freaked out, started going on about me supporting people who kill Jews, and that I was a walking, talking political soapbox. And I just responded, you know, well, he left out cats. Um, but, I mean, this is the sort of thing you cannot have... The minute something like that happens, you, you can't have a sane and sober conversation. You can't. It's off the rails. And once somebody gets that, that worked up and, and just loses it that way, that's it. The conversation's gone. And I mean, um, we have to get better. And so I'm, I'm going to take a step. And I don't know whether this is going to help or hurt. Uh, earlier in this week, I, I offered support for somebody. I'm not going to do that now because I think it would just cause him more trouble. I am going to send my support to Sargon of Akkad, um, someone who made nasty videos about me in the past, which of course they weren't true, um, is now going after Sargon, apparently once again because of personal reasons. Um, and I haven't even watched the video. I have no interest in what this individual has to say about Sargon. Um, Sargon is doing his thing and I don't even have to think about whether there's any sort of proof or evidence or whatever to, to this, this other idiot's beef, because I know what this guy did to me. I know what he did to me. I know how he twisted things and crafted information to make it look way worse than it really is. Sometimes where there's smoke, there isn't fire, guys. Sometimes there's just a fog machine or a stick of incense. All right. And, and these people who attack because they have been trained to, you know, uh, archive, 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 and the internet never forgets and all this stuff, this, this false empowerment, all it's doing is destroying good people. And so I'm going to lend my support. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to help, but, you know, I've done Sargon's stream twice. He is very nice. Some of his father followers are not. I shouldn't say nice. Sargon's not nice. Sargon is respectful, and there's a massive difference. We obviously disagree ideologically on a lot of points, but we can still have a conversation. His followers called me a cunt and said I should be burned, not realizing what that would smell like. So, you know, that was sort of a mixed experience there. And so if I was a pettier person, I would go, no, you know, it, it's a culture of hate. Um... What do you expect? No, I'm not going to do that because that's wrong. I don't agree with it. Sargon himself is trying to do um, his best based on what he believes in. And that doesn't mean any of us are perfect, God. But I don't believe that he deserves the nonsense he has been getting. And he is uh, an authentic, passionate person based on his belief system. And I think that that's what people should focus on, not an attack video by a hater who, in my opinion, 
is just trying to make a name for himself based on other people that, you know, what, what I find is a certain individual who went after me and went after Sargon, they have a, an interchange, an exchange with one of us. We come out on top because we're either more popular or we make more sense, whatever. And then he decides that we have to be destroyed. And that's not right. But some people want to believe it. And I don't think that's fair. I don't have to agree with 100% what someone is saying to defend their right to say it. And I don't think that Sargon deserves this defamation, especially since it's one of those things of there are big questions. Like, I hate it when people do that. It brings up some interesting questions. Guys, you're not trained journalists, so stop taking the words out of journalists' mouths, okay? That, the, the questions thing can sometimes be a shield that yellow journalists use to just defame someone. Um, be very careful when you do that. Uh, so, you know, support to Sargon. I know he'll keep going. I know this is just a bump on the road with him, but I know it sucks and it's exceptionally frustrating and it's a distraction and he's got a young family to deal with and he doesn't need or deserve this garbage. So that's where I'm going to leave it for the talkie talkie for the week. I'm going to show you guys where that key goes now. Again, this game's called Anna's Quest. It's super cute. I'm not so sure about the audio anymore. You're either going to love or hate the point and click interface. It is what it is. You know, if you don't like it, don't buy it. A fake? Ooh. Where? That. Where's the handle? That wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Oh, you get to see the ghost now. Here we go. I'll turn up the audio. Viringel, I thought you said the button was behind the painting. Well, yes, but but uh, the, the button is there, I, I swear. Oh, it's ghost. Just... Your information is not well, reliable. It's inside the safe. Oh, no. It's, it's simple. Don't worry. I've watched Winfrieda open it a hundred times. I bet the combination's yeah. on the cat's necklace. The large hole is for a diamond-shaped key she uses. There we go. She keeps it on the cat's collar for safekeeping. Boat. Oh, yes, you're right. And uh, see the lag in the dialogue. How it should be quicker. Thing. And and it's not. Uh, there's um two locks on the safe. You see. Uh, uh you just uh, need um <laughs> Winfrieda's voice. Oh, I know how to solve this. Your ring, girl. How am I going to do that? Uh, you'll figure something out, Anna. I'm sure you will. <sighs> All right. All right. I'm gonna figure this Thanks, out. Thanks, Uringo. I'll go try and open this safe, I guess. All right, Anna. I'll be here if you need anything. That's the video for the day. I hope you guys like the feedback. I hope you guys like the little game preview. Apologies to the uh, <laughs> apologies to the game makers that I I'm late on this by a month. Sometimes it happens. Uh, but they, you know, they got a nice little demo here of how the gameplay works and it's all, you can play it completely on the mouse so you can use the keyboard as well. Um, but thanks for listening guys. Happy weekend. We'll see you back on, on Monday. Right now I'm not sure if it's going to be a mountain Monday or a Momo Monday, but, uh, we will be back with something Zen. Have a good weekend.